Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to my reading journey. Hope you're all doing fine and today we're gonna continue with the third part of the Marian ad. So let's do this. The sick man appeared to be about 30. His countenance bore a look of boldness and dissipation. Dissipation. But was not without a symmetry of feature and the fine lines drawn by a taste and indulgence in humor indulgence humor that gives the redeeming redeeming touch there was an odor of spilled wine about his clothes the physician laid back his outer garments garments and then with a penknife slid the shirt front from collar to waist the obstacles cleared he laid his air to, to the heart to listen listened and listened intently intently mitral regur regurgitation regurgitation he said softly when he rose the words ended with the arising inflection inflection of uncertainty again he listened long and this time he said, mitral is sufficiency, insufficiency. With the accent of an assured diagnosis. Madame, he began in the reassuring tones that had so often a light anxiety, a light anxiety. There is a probability as he slowly turned his head to face the lady, he saw her fall white as swooning, swooning into the arms of the old negress. Poor lamb, poor lamb, has they done killed on Cindy's own blessed, blessed child? May the Lord story with his wrath them what stole her away? That breaks that angel heart what left. Lift her feet, said Dr. James, assisting to support the dro drooping form. Drooping form. Where is her room? She must be put to bed. In her, sir. The woman nodded her kerchief kerchiefed head towards the door. That's Miss. Emma's room. They carried her in there and laid her on the bed. Her pulse was faint but regular. She passed from the swoon, swoon, without recovering consciousness, into a profound slumber. Slumber. She's quite exhausted, said the physician. Sleep is a good remedy. When she wakes, give her a toddy. Toddy, who's Toddy? With a neck in it, if she can take it. How did she get that bruise upon her forehead? She done got a leak there, sir. The pool and fell, no, sir. The old woman's racial mutability swept her into a sudden flare of indigation. Mutability. Oh, Cindy, ain't. Winter, lie for that devil. He done it, sir. May the Lord, whether he had the hand, what there now. Since the promise, her sweet lamb, she ain't going tell. Miss Emmy got hurt, sir, on the head. I see. Dr. James tapped to a stand where a handsome lamp lamp burned and turned the flame low stay here with your mistress mistress he ordered and keep quiet so she will sleep if she wakes give her the toddy what's toddy yes if she grows any weaker let me know there is something strange about it 
There's more strange things than that round here, began the negress, but the physician hushed her in a seldom employed prem preemptory concentrated voice. Prem perem peremptory concentrated voice with which he had often allied hysteria itself. He returned to the other room, closing the door softly behind him. The man on the bed had had not moved, but his eyes were open. His lips seemed to form words. Dr. James bent, bent his head to listen. The money, the money, was what they were whispering. Can the money, the money, was what they were whispering. Can you understand what I say? As the doctor speaking low but distinctly, dis distant, distinctly, distinctly, the head nodded slightly. I'm a physician sent for, sent for by your wife. You're Messer Chandler. I'm tall. You're quite ill. You must not excite or distress yourself at all. The patient I seem to be con to him. The doctor stooped, stooped to catch the same faint words. The money, the twenty thousand dollars. Where's the this money in the bank? The the eyes expressed a negative. Tell her. The whisper was growing. Growing fainter. The twenty thousand dollars, her money. His eyes were wandered about the room. You have placed this money somewhere. Doctor James' voice was toiling, toiling, like a syrinx to conjure the sick, the secret from the man's failing intelligence. Is it in this room? He thought he saw a fluttering as ascent in the diamond eyes. The pulse under his fingers was as fine and small as a silk thread. There arose a doc in Dr. James' brain and heart the instincts of his other profession. Promptly, as he acted in everything, he decided to learn the where whereabouts of this money and at the cal calculated and certain cost of a human life. Drawing from his pocket a little pad of prescription blanks, he sc scribbled, scribbled upon one of them a formula suited according suited according to the best practice to the needs of this sufferer. Going to the door of the inner room, he softly called the old woman, gave her the prescription, and play, bade her take it to some drugstore and fetch the medicine. When she had gone, muttering to herself, the doctor stepped to the bedside of the lady. She still slept soundly. Her pulse was a little stronger. Her forehead was cool. She say, sorry, save, say, her forehead was cool. Save her with inflammation of the bruise extended and, and a slight moisture covered it. Unless disturbed it, disturb it, she would yet sleep for hours. He found the key in the door and locked it after him when he returned all right as we see guys this physician doctor as as a thief right and we're gonna figure out what's gonna happen next but tomorrow in the next part so thank you for joining me today and see you tomorrow bye